Welcome back to Andy Cooks, and today we're talking about the classic Caesar salad. Well, it's not actually the classic Caesar salad because we're going to do the version uh, which is with chicken and some boiled eggs, uh, which is kind of more common in most restaurants these days. And I guess it was adapted over the years for a more of a full meal type of salad uh, as opposed to a side dish. The classic Caesar salad came from a hotel in Mexico in like the 1920s, I think. It was called Caesar's Hotel. It was an Italian immigrant who was running restaurants in Mexico and the US, and, and he's uh, famed for inventing the salad. And I'm pretty sure that hotel still exists today. And it was made tableside, so they would make the dressing and dress the leaves, and it was literally romaine lettuce, this is baby Jim, but it was romaine lettuce, uh, croutons, Caesar dressing, and that was it. But like I was saying, we're gonna do a more of a full meal one, and we're gonna introduce some lardons and some pan fried chicken. So, a few techniques to take from this one. The bacon cooked in water, we'll go through that really quickly. How to pan fry a beautiful chicken breast with the skin on, so you get lovely crispy skin and a beautifully cooked chicken breast. And then there's like a basic emulsion and the assembly of the whole thing. But let's get stuck in. Before we do that, huge favor, just go and smash that like button for me, subscribe if you're not, it helps me out heaps. All right, so what you're gonna need, for the classic Caesar dressing, we're gonna use egg yolks, lemon juice, olive oil, Dijon mustard, anchovies, parmesan cheese, Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper. Now, I like the addition of a bit of garlic, but I'm not sure if it's actually traditional to put garlic in it or not. I'm gonna err on the side of caution and say it's not before my comments blow up, but I'll, I'm gonna put a little bit of raw garlic in there as well. And then for your leaf choice, you want something crunchy, green and fresh. Uh, this is baby gem. Uh, traditionally it's done with romaine, which is basically a slightly larger version of this. And we're gonna keep those pretty whole. On top of that, we're gonna have some croutons, which we're just gonna toast with some olive oil and salt and pepper. And then like I was saying at the start, we're gonna do some bacon lardons and I'll show you that technique that I use with the water in the pan. Uh, and we're gonna pan fry some chicken breasts. So let's get stuck in. And we're gonna start with the proteins so that they can rest while we're making the rest of the salad. All right, so pan, cold pan with some olive oil in the bottom. Turn the pan on, season your chicken breast with salt. Salt only at this point. And you'd be pretty generous with it. You got a pretty thick piece of meat here. I uh, need that salt to penetrate all the way through. So skin side down, then the oil. And just let that come up to temperature. Once it comes up to temperature, we're gonna turn the pan down. We're really slowly sort of render that fat out. And what we're trying to do is render the fat out, get really crispy skin and cook the chicken all the way through. All right, so our chicken's coming up to temperature here. We're just gonna turn that right down to low. Just gonna manage that. You just wanna kind of, just manage it. Just let it do its thing. All right, bacon, crispy bacon cooked in water. Seems like it ain't gonna work, but it will. And you hear that noise there, that's all that is happening when we cook the crispy bacon in water. All we're doing when we're trying to crisp up is to take the moisture out of it, all right? So, which sounds counterintuitive to what we're trying to do here when we're putting water in here. But the reason it works is because it lets the fat render much more even. Once the fat renders out, then we get crispy flesh. So put your bacon in your pan and you kind of don't really want it overlapping. You want it all touching the surface. Like that and put a bit of water in it. It's that simple. Doesn't need to be filtered water. Just needs to be enough to cover it. Once that evaporates, the fat's had a good chance to render out and then the, the, the flesh is gonna start to crisp out. While all that's happening, we're gonna boil some eggs. Eggs into just boiling water. Timer on for six minutes. Now you don't want the, the water to go crazy. You just want it to uh, just simmer away. If it does, the only reason you don't want that is you kind of want it to cook more evenly and you don't want the eggs banging around in there. All right, we can see here our bacon is starting to, the, the water evaporation is almost completely evaporated. It looks pretty anemic, um, but this is kind of crunch time. This is where it starts getting good. Now don't, don't kind of move this around too much. The only reason I move that then is to have an even surface of evaporation and that way you have an even surface of oil that's left behind. 
Now, it's also worth mentioning this only really works with streaky bacon. The loin bacon or the bacon that you kind of typically get um, in Australia, often in the UK, with the big piece of loin, doesn't work so well. The streaky bacon works better because of the higher fat content. All right, our six minute timer's just gone off for our eggs. We're just gonna run these under cold water. All right, we're really at go time here with the bacon. You can see the fat's running out nicely. Now, you only really wanna flip this a couple of times. There's no need to kind of keep flipping it too much, but I do usually flip twice. Second flip. All right, and we're done. This is what we're looking for. Now, it's better if you have a piece of paper towel to put this on, I'm fresh out conveniently, but put it on a tray just to continue rendering out. All right, how's our chicken doing? Looking pretty good. You can see here, or you probably can't see, but it is starting to go more opaque. So the, you know, the temperature's coming up slowly. We're not too far from being cooked all the way through. So let's see what it's gonna look like on the other side. Oh yeah, this is what you want. I'm gonna check the temperature. All right, so that's only at like 38 degrees, so I'm gonna put it through the oven. If it was up closer to 60, I'd probably just finish it in the pan. The only risk you get as you finish it in the pan like this is that you get a really crispy bottom side, which I kind of don't really want. The other option is just to put the whole pan in the oven, which is what I'd do if I was in a restaurant and this pan would fit, but it doesn't fit in the oven. See all that good stuff on there. In the oven, that'll only take seven to eight minutes. All right, croutons. This is pretty simple. Cheap French stick, nothing crazy. Day old's even better. You want to cut them about this big. Pretty simple, classic rounds into a pan like that. Oven's on 180. Now, little drizzle of olive oil. Season with salt. It's also a good place to introduce some garlic if you wanted to or some herbs. Into 180 degree oven, 10 minutes. Onto the dressing. Two egg yolks. Save your whites, make a pavlova, make a amaretto sour, whatever you want to do with them. Or put them in the fridge and throw them out in a week's time when you realize they've been there too long. These eggs came from my Nana's chickens. Not sponsored. And if you're worried about eating a raw egg yolk, you can always buy pasteurized egg yolks from the supermarket. Into that. Now you can just buy anchovy paste, but I'll just buy anchovies and mush them up. Three anchovy fillets. Use a small fork to mush them up. Now this is a super forgiving emulsion because it's pretty heavy on the egg yolk. So emulsions get tricky when you're dealing with, um, you're trying to put lots of fat into a small amount of egg yolk. That's when you have to be super careful. I'm not saying you have to be careful with this one, but it's a little bit more forgiving. All right, that's good enough for me. These are mustard. That's about like a heaped teaspoon. And some grated parmesan. Ideally fresh grated. Don't buy grated parmesan, it's no, it's no bueno, no good. What's that? I reckon that's about, I don't know, 20 grams. I wouldn't bother measuring it, just go with your gut. Lemon juice, we'll put in at the end. A couple of dashes of Worcestershire sauce. And just a little bit of grated garlic. Leave this out if you're not into raw garlic or are you making this for a date. A couple of grinds of pepper. Give everything a mix. Start to drizzle in your olive oil. Have a taste. Mm. Very good. 
Needs a bit of oh, almost a disaster. Excuse my messiness. Squeeze a lemon, try not to get any pips in there. That's pretty good. I'm not even gonna put any salt in that. I think that's kind of almost just enough. So that's it, time to assemble. I'm just gonna carve this chicken first. How good. When carving chicken, I think, make sure you rest it well, all the juices will go everywhere. Uh, and also, cut against the grain, like you're gonna cook any, or cut any kind of piece of meat. And for a Caesar salad, this, make sure your pieces aren't too big. You kind of, you don't really wanna be using a knife and fork, um, if that makes sense. You just wanna be able to use a fork. That end bit's always for the chef. Mm. You know, chicken breast always gets a bad rap, but when it's cooked right, it's delicious. All right, so now everything's ready. Dressing's made, our chicken's carved, uh, I've washed the lettuce, our croutons are done, it's time to assemble. So, in the same bowl, take our nicely washed lettuce and in there. And it's a pretty heavily dressed salad, this one. Now, you can either use salad spoons, or honestly, I think it's easier just to use your hands. Uh, it does get a bit messy, but you can be more gentle. You kind of have more tactile feel. And you're not squashing the leaf. So nice clean hands. And what you're looking for is every piece of lettuce to be evenly dressed. All right, now we're gonna arrange it in a bowl. Croutons next. Egg, our bacon. Egg and half. Oh, I love it when the egg's like that, jammy. So it still holds together, but it's not overcooked. It doesn't go all dry like it can. Always season your egg separately. Eggs love salt. Your chicken. And one last shaving of Parmesan. And there you have it. You Caesar salad with chicken, crispy bacon, and hen's egg. Let's eat some. Mm. It's just delicious. The smoky bacon, chicken, the super umami dressing with the anchovies, nice and creamy with the cheese. It's such a good dish. It's a classic for a reason. Anyway, legends, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Smash that like button if you haven't. Subscribe if you're not. And we'll see you next week for another recipe. Peace. Oh, no.